Okay, so if we were together in person, I normally ask the class, like, what do you know about, what do you think about density? Um, some people already know what the density of water is. They'll say, oh, the density of water is one. Um, and yes, that's true, depending on what units you're using. Um, people know that if something is more dense than something else, it'll sink. If it's less dense, it will float. Um, sometimes people will tell me about oil and water. They know that one floats on top of the other because they have different densities. Um, a little more background for you. Density is an inherent property of a substance. So the density of water, for instance, density of water is one in the units of grams per milliliter. Um, and so anything with the density more than one gram per milliliter will sink in water. Um, it doesn't matter if I have a little bit of water or a lot of water. If that water is in a cup or in a rectangular Tupperware, the amount of water I have does not affect this and the shape does not affect this. That's what I mean by an inherent property. Um, aluminum, for instance, you probably are used to aluminum foil. Like that's your experience with aluminum. You're like, oh, it's really light. Um, this is aluminum, pure aluminum. This cylinder or this rectangular prism is also made of aluminum. And this uh, cylinder is also made of aluminum. Now, all three of these things have the same density. And that can help me identify that they are indeed aluminum. Um, if you weigh, we'll just take two of them. If you put both of these objects on a scale, would you think they would weigh the same? No, even just looking at them, they don't weigh the same. Their mass, which is what we measure in grams, their mass would be very different. But their volumes are also different. This one, right, if we tried to measure this with a ruler, the length, the width, and then like the height, which is that ever so skinny part, we could calculate the volume. We could also measure length, width, and height of this. They'd have different volumes. So different masses and different volumes, but the same density. Basically, how, how tightly packed together are the atoms? For aluminum, regardless of the size, the shape, whether it's a little piece or a big piece, it's exactly the same. So density can help us identify different objects. Um, mathematically, I sort of alluded to it already, and you may be familiar with the formula, D equals M over V. Um, I know some people are taught with like a triangle, D is M over V, and then they multiply if they're next to each other. If you know that, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. In this class, when we give you a formula, we will always provide that formula. Um, I'm recording this video not knowing if it's for virtual academy or for people who are going to come in and take tests or for people who are sick. But if you are ever in person taking a test in honors chemistry with me or Ms. Frater, we will give you the formulas written down. You just have to know how to use them. So D equals M over V, that would be given, where the D stands for density, the M stands for mass which you in your head probably think of as being the same thing as weight. It's not actually, but for our purposes, if you want to think of it as weight, how heavy something is, mass. And the V stands for volume. Now, something else that matters when we're using this formula is what units things are in. So mass uh, in chemistry is often in grams. Technically, it could be in pounds. It's not going to be in chemistry, but that's a unit of mass. Um, you could use kilograms. If a scale reads it, that's a unit for mass. Volume, typically we will use milliliters or liters. Um, centimeters cubed, though, like if you measure three sides of something, like this, um, with a ruler in centimeters, when you multiply those three measurements together, it's now centimeters cubed. Um, also appropriate units for volume. We calculate density by taking the mass dividing by the volume. And the units for density are the whatever units of mass we used divided by whatever units of volume we used. So in the density of water that I gave you, grams per milliliter, if we had some data to calculate that, we were trying to calculate that number, 
we know that the mass we plugged in must have been in grams, and the volume we plugged in must have been in milliliters. So keeping track of your units is important. I can't use a density in grams per milliliter and then plug in kilograms on top. It won't work. The units don't match up. Um, one thing you should know, though, milliliters and centimeters cubed are the same thing. Like one milliliter is equivalent to one centimeter cubed, so those units are interchangeable. Um, okay, so looking at an example problem. Okay, so when I see a question like this, I'm first going to just skim through it. They talk about a radius. That's confusing. Okay, don't worry about it. We have the density and we have the mass. Okay, well density and mass I know are both in this formula, so I'm going to use this formula. That's how I approach these problems. I don't worry about, can I, do I know how the whole problem is going to go? I just say, okay, well what do I have? Where could I maybe plug it in? Um, now, I have a mass that I could plug in, I have a density I could plug in. The problem is their units. The density is grams over milliliters, so on top I have grams in that unit, whereas for my mass I have kilograms. They don't match, they need to match, it doesn't matter which one you convert. However, um, a lot of people end up messing up conversions when there's some kind of fraction in the units. So I would suggest turning the kilograms into grams. Um, there's a different video that you should have already watched showing you that. So one, two, three, that's 125 grams. Um, so I can plug my density in, I can plug my mass in, and I don't have a volume. Did they ask me for volume? No, but this is something I can solve. If the math screws you up, if you mess up the math, um, I would suggest putting this over 1, and then you can cross multiply. You're less likely to make an algebra mistake that way. So we have 0.5 times V equals 125. I know what I'm trying to solve for is the only variable that there is, the V, so the 0.5 is in my way. I divide by 0.5. And I get a volume of 250. I have to put units on that number, so I think about what units volume could be. Oh, milliliters, liters. Going back to the units I used for density, I know that volume is just whatever's on the bottom. So these are milliliters. Now, I just went to box that because I'm so used to that being my answer, but it's not. They asked us for the radius of a ball. Now, you're also going to be given a whole bunch of volume formulas. Okay, so the volume formulas you'll be given, the volume of a rectangular prism, so like a box, is length times width times height. The volume of a cylinder, so something like this, or like, I don't know how you can see it, like a can. Pi times the radius squared times the height. Um, it can be height or length. Um, a lot of times when the object is standing up like this, people think that's the height. And then as soon as I lay it down on its side, they call it a length, but it's literally the same measurement. So height or length, it doesn't matter. Uh, and the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Um, we have a ball, that's a sphere, and they want the radius. So I found the volume of that sphere. I can take that volume and plug it in. Um, then I can solve for my R. Um, milliliters is the same thing, remember, as centimeters cubed. So whenever I do solve for this R, I'll be cube rooting it. You'll see we get there. And so that cube will go away. My answer will be just in centimeters. Um, do it as many steps as you need to if the algebra screws you up. So I'm going to first, I'm trying to get the R by itself, I'm going to first divide by 4 thirds but I'm going to make sure that that 4 thirds is in parentheses. Um, some of your calculators will have a fraction button, some of them, otherwise I just do division. So I would literally type 250 divided by parentheses, 4 divided by 3, parentheses, enter. And I get 187.5, which is my pi r cubed. Then I'm going to divide by pi. If you have a pi button on your calculator, use it. 
Otherwise, use 3.14 and you'll be fine. Um, and I get 59.683 is R cubed. Uh, you'll notice I'm, I'm, I rounded on my paper. I don't need to write the whole number out. I'm actually keeping everything in my calculator though. Um, so for instance, when I had the 187.5, I didn't clear it. I just, it said 187.5, I pressed divided by, and it took me to a screen where it said ANS, divide by. That's saying take my previous answer and divide it by, and then I typed my pi button. Um, and so even though I'm rounding on paper and not rounding in my calculator, that's how I do my work 99% of the time. And so even though we're super not picky about if our answers round a little different, um, if you want your answers to look much more like mine, keep everything in your calculator. Okay, um, now to get rid of this cubed, what I do is I, again, this answer 59.683 is already here. So I just type a caret, that upward caret, and it'll show me with answer caret. And what that is, is raising it to a power, giving it an exponent. To get rid of a three, I raise it to the one divided by three. So I'm essentially, I'm cube rooting this, or I'm raising it to the one third power to get rid of that cube. Caret, again, parentheses, one divided by three, close the parentheses. And that gets me an R of 3.91 centimeters as we talked about. Um, with rounding, again, give me answers that have two or three numbers after the decimal that aren't zero, and you're good. Not particular at all. Um, you'll get used to that, I promise. Eventually you'll stop asking, is this okay, is that okay? But for now, while you're learning, ask whatever you need to ask to feel comfortable. That includes asking for help with the algebra, asking for help with your calculator, um, whatever you need to do, we'd rather you ask than not. Okay, we know you're still getting to know this class. Part of the reason I teach this thing that seems so random, as I said, is to get you used to the expectations of the class and some things you'll encounter. Um, so please ask for help. Uh, if this is super easy for you, great, awesome. But if it's not, that's okay. You'll get better at this stuff over time. This is the, the mathematical demands that come with chem. Um, and you'll practice and get better. So when you go to do these try problems, it might not be exactly the same. I might not give you the density and the mass and ask for the radius. Maybe I give you the radius and you have to find the volume to then go plug in. Um, it's not always going to be a carbon, haha, <laughs> funny, a carbon copy of the exact problem you saw, but ask yourself, what do I have? Where can I plug it in? What can I find? Okay, is that my answer? That'll serve you well all year long. So keep trying, keep asking questions. Um, we're here to help.